I um, cannot predict what will be the effects, except that it's quite clear that there is no going back, that uh, in a way there are going to be very major changes, both locally and globally, um, in the way that different states and societies are going to take seriously issues of pandemic, but also uh, the effect on the economy, but also the effect on polities and uh, democracies. Because what we've seen in this pandemic, uh, we've seen um, several processes which I expanded on in, in my lectures. First of all, we have seen that um, what has happened have uh, exposed some of the most important ways which makes any society and state sustainable. While because of uh, under neoliberal economy, we were led to believe that it is a market uh, which is important in terms of uh, development and sustain, sustain, uh, sustenance and, uh, and uh, progression of um, the economy and life, it became clear that it all depends on what they call key workers uh, and the infrastructure, which very often is part of the public sector. And the fact that under neoliberal economies, this public sector has been starved in recent years meant that especially the more neoliberal economy had been dominant in different states, the less prepared they were to deal with these uh, terrible emergencies. So on the one hand, one would think that there will be more uh, higher importance given to issues of uh, public sector uh, to uh, infrastructure maintenance to uh, universal income which will keep on going, people going and not starving while the market is not operating on the one hand. On the other hand, also a recognition that these people, the key workers, are not necessarily the ones who are the most skilled or educated and nor many of them are even citizens of the country but uh, many of them are migrants uh, in very precarious uh, situations. So um, one would hope that this would have the effect of recognizing that what is important is not the origin, the color, or the nationality of the person, but what their contribution to the functioning of the society. But of course, this also exposed how racialized this division of labor was. And in every rank of uh, maintenance, from consultants to nurses to cleaners to delivery workers to security guards, the front line was unproportionately held by members of racialized minorities and uh, migrants. So um, this, I think, is one of the reasons that there has been such a rage and such a determination that things cannot stay as they are after the murder of George Floyd in the United States that created this uh, global wave of rage and solidarity, uh, which we are uh, witnessing. At the same time, um, I don't know how it is in Spain. I, I think because of your government, it's a bit better. But in Britain, we've seen not only complete incompetence of dealing with it, and this is why thousands and thousands of unnecessary lives uh, have been uh, taken, but also that instead of recognizing uh, 
the, the importance of the national economy, many contracts were given to not only to private companies, very often by cronies of those in, in government, but also continues the dependence, for example, of protective uh, garments instead of local companies that were uh, asking for this kind of contracts, they were given to companies in Cambodia where maybe the labor is cheaper, but of course, again, you are dependent um, on um, all the uh, problems of international travel that, uh, that is happening now. And, and in Britain, there have been cases, uh, for example, about masks that were, instead of asking them to be done in Britain, they uh, recruited them in Turkey, but they were produced substandard, so they were not able to so, so they, they, the Turkish government actually said, did, delayed and said don't, uh, not to, uh, to send them. But in Britain, nobody had the mask because instead of asking locals, they depended on, on that. So finally they arrived, but they were not usable. Billions of pounds were used in this kind of inefficient way. So, <clears throat> and in Britain, of course, there is also the additional factor of Brexit. One would think that international solidarity and especially regional solidarity in Europe, the importance of it would be recognized. But because they came to power on this promise of delivering Brexit quickly, all that has happened under the pandemic did not deter them from this very populist nationalist um, target to do it by uh, the end of this year. So. I, I have no idea how it's going to happen, but we know the news today in Britain has been that already 600,000 people lost their jobs uh, that we know just in um, uh, during the last couple of months, but there are still millions which are kept artificially in fellows that are going to expire after the summer so probably millions more will become unemployed. How this is going to happen at the same time as Brexit, how this is, and this is just one country, how is it going to happen globally? I have no idea how it's going to happen. Now, during the pandemic, of course, part of the a way to try and contain the pandemic has been by reinforcing a bordering and introducing new levels of bordering. For example, in the EU, national borders have been introduced. The uh, borders between different regions in the country because of the differential effects of the pandemic on uh, in different zones of the country. So. Generally, um, I'm not saying that bordering does not have, and borders do not have uh, functions, uh, and, and definitely not in this pandemic. But what we have seen is that it, it created some very strong effects which has exaggerated the way that this everyday bordering have been operating before, because what we argue is that borders are not either closed or open. They usually work like computers firewalls. So they are virtually invisible to some people, but for many they are completely obstructed and, and people cannot, uh, cannot cross them. And because of that, we see that the very rich continued to use private jets and they were not checked and they were not stopped and they escaped to some kind of paradise resort in which they could uh, escape the, the general uh, lockout. On, for, for the economy, we saw that seasonal agricultural work, workers continue to be flown as well, as well and of course people who are 
for their skills, and of course the goods which are so uh, important in order to deal with a pandemic, uh, especially when the national economies were not able to, to deal with them. So it has been very uneven and the effect has been devastated on people who do not have the who do not have the homes and the secure homes and the entitlement to be in the in the country for some people who are already in the country who are already in key workers there have been temporary suspension when they became the national heroes because they are the key workers in Britain, there have been the paradox situation in which while they were hailed as national heroes, their families still had to pay for any kind of medical treatment. But because of public pressure, uh, this has been uh, changed after a little while, luckily. And, but in the post-Brexit uh, point immigration system that had been introduced in the middle of the pandemic, this key workers, the care workers, are still uh, classified as unskilled workers and therefore do not have a right to immigrate, some of the paradoxes of the situation. But the situation has been much, much worse to those who have been stuck outside border, uh, borders, in detention camps, in, in, the, in the desert, uh, and, and a lot of the, uh, the, the supplies, the charities, the aid that used to keep them alive have been withdrawn during this, uh, during this period because of this very strong uh, bordering uh, programs. And of course, this was not only national borders. We've seen in countries, for example, like India, but there's been also others that rural workers in the lockout local suddenly did not have where to be and where to stay and they started to walk for many miles and starving and others got into some trains that got stuck on the rails and they were starving there have been some horrible pictures like that there have been also uh, similar things like this in Latin America and we see a lot of situations in which the borderings, instead of having a international opening and global working, not that people should not have containment and by contact and tracing of and testing and treating those who have the pandemic, but by global cooperation because of the new liberal economy. For example, Trump was trying to pressurize to have the patent on the vaccine that no other countries will be able to benefit from it. Luckily, many countries now have gone together and agreed to share the vaccine if it will happen. But the pharmaceutical uh, companies, the, the competition, part of it, of course, is in order to save humanity, but part of it is the huge, incredible profits that are being made because unlike what used to happen before, like for example with the polio uh, virus when it, 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 when it was uh, discovered, the, the vaccine tree, which was virtually offered uh, free everywhere, this is not going to happen. And again, there's going to be a huge difference between rich and poor countries and probably also between rich and poor people within the same country. So it's very difficult to know what will happen. But uh, as I said in my lecture uh, at the end, I'm an optimist. I would like to be an optimist, but I cannot be um, in this kind of situation. Uh, but I am open and try and be part of any struggle to make it better rather than worse.